Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to use moles to balance chemical equations. This is for the higher tier only. We've already looked at balancing chemical equations in a previous video. In that video we used counting atoms to balance equations, but in this video we're going to use moles. It's fairly straightforward if you learn the method. I'm going to start with an easy example. This shows the reaction between hydrogen and chlorine to make hydrogen chloride. The question tells us that 2 grams of hydrogen react with 71 grams of chlorine to make 73 grams of hydrogen chloride. We're going to use that information to balance the equation. The first thing we need to do is calculate the number of moles of all of the chemicals in our reaction. Remember that the number of moles is the mass divided by the relative formula mass. We've got 2 grams of hydrogen and hydrogen has a relative formula mass of 2. This means that we've got 1 mole of hydrogen. I'm going to show that by putting a 1 in front of the hydrogen like this. We've got 71 grams of chlorine and the relative formula mass of chlorine is 71, so that means that we've got 1 mole of chlorine. I'm going to show that by putting a 1 in front of the chlorine like this. OK, we've got 73 grams of hydrogen chloride and the relative formula mass is 36.5, so we've got 2 moles of hydrogen chloride. And again, I'm going to show this by putting a 2 in front of the hydrogen chloride like this. Now we're almost finished. We've now got to look again at the large numbers. We've got to make certain that these numbers are the lowest possible ratio. To do that we divide all of them by the smallest number. So in this case the smallest number is 1. Starting with the hydrogen, dividing 1 by 1 gives us 1. With the chlorine, again dividing 1 by 1 gives us 1. And with the hydrogen chloride, dividing 2 by 1 gives us 2. So as we can see, these numbers are already the lowest possible ratio. This means that this equation is now fully balanced. All we have to do now is remove the number 1 in front of the hydrogen and the chlorine, as we don't write 1 in chemical equations. Now you might be thinking, what's the point of balancing equations using this method, especially easy ones such as this? Well, this method works really well when the equation is more complicated, such as this one. 54 grams of aluminium reacts with 216 grams of iron 2 oxide, forming 102 grams of aluminium oxide and 168 grams of iron. Balance the equation. You should pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, first we need to calculate the number of moles of all of the chemicals, and I'm showing you these here. We've got 2 moles of aluminium, 3 moles of iron 2 oxide, 1 mole of aluminium oxide, and 3 moles of iron. Now we've got to work out the ratio of these numbers by dividing by the smallest number. In this case, the smallest number is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2, 3 divided by 1 is 3, 1 divided by 1 is 1, and finally 3 divided by 1 is 3. So that means that these are our balancing numbers, and we can put them into the equation like this. Remember that we don't write 1 in chemical equations. Here's a final example for you to try. 1,248 grams of barium chloride reacts with 684 grams of aluminium sulfate, forming 1,398 grams of barium sulfate and 534 grams of aluminium chloride. Balance the equation. This looks tricky, but it really isn't if you follow the method. Pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, first we need to work out the number of moles of all of the chemicals involved, and I'm showing you these here. We've got 6 moles of barium chloride, 2 moles of aluminium sulphate, 6 moles of barium sulphate, and finally 4 moles of aluminium chloride. Next we work out the ratio by dividing all of these numbers by the smallest number. In this case the smallest number is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. These are the numbers which we use to balance our equation, so I'm putting them into the equation here, and don't forget that we don't need to write the number 1. Remember that you'll find plenty more questions on using moles to balance chemical equations in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to use moles to balance chemical equations.